this video, we're going to be talking about all the products in the train product lineup as it relates to heat pumps. We're going to be talking about single stage, multi-stage, the difference between these lineup or these different heat pumps, what you should get, things to consider for your climate. We're going to talk about the different rebates that are available. We're going to talk about energy star ratings. I'm going to show you where you can pull up the energy star ratings and there's a website. It's very simple, energystar.gov. And I'll make sure to link that in the description for you. But before we get started, if you haven't done so already, please smash that like button for the algorithm. It's a huge help. It takes a lot of time and energy to put out videos like this and content like this so your support is much appreciated and if you're in the market for HVAC system replacement consider subscribing to the channel because we put out daily and weekly content on how you can get the best HVAC for your home we talk about everything from indoor air quality to how to pick out a heat pump for your climate or pick out different types of HVAC whether you're looking for a furnace a boiler geothermal system we talk about a lot of everything residential HVAC on this channel so your support is much appreciated and that being said let's just dive into the content and take a look at what we have so first off what we have you know on my screen here this is train.com i can link this in the description but that's a pretty easy one to remember when you go to this website it's going to have some single stage heat pumps like the 15 or the xr15 and they have a few different models the xr14 there's this low profile heat pump it looks like it might be similar to the daikin fit not and i'll explain why on this particular one it is similar in that it's a side discharge unit but it's not in terms of performance but the xv19 and train resolute which is actually not pictured here but I can show that a little bit later is another product that they do have on the market that is available and works especially in cold climates and we'll talk about why and if you're looking to get a heat pump for a cold climate some of the things that you want to be aware of to start off I'm going to go ahead and go to energystar.gov like I said so you can pick that out and you can see what is available and basically when you go to up here to this find products tab you select product finder and scroll down to heating and cooling and pick out heat pumps right here ducted is what you're looking for and Unless you're looking for mini split systems there's a ton of mini splits out there we're not going to talk about those in this video but just the ducted systems and once you select ducted heat pumps you can see all these different brands come up you can just go over here to sort by brand and pick out the brand you're looking at and in this case we're looking at all the train heat pumps and that we're going to be doing a comparison with and we'll be able to cover those so you can see everything from the train xv20i which is a cold climate heat pump it is tax credit eligible all the way down to something like XL16i, which is a multi-stage system, uh, not an inverter, and we'll explain what that is, and we'll talk about that, but that is tax credit eligible, although it is not a cold climate system. And so since we're on the topic, when you look here at this Energy Star site, there's two things to consider. When you see something says tax credit eligible, that means that particular model is eligible for tax credits. When you wanna pay attention to these numbers right here, this is the tonnage. So you can see here, this is basically a one and a half to two and a half ton system in the train XL15. That qualifies. And when you're going over here, when it says tax credit eligible, that typically just means this orange section here, right? Because this is the southern area. If it's cold climate eligible, it's going to have a little cold climate designation next to it. Like Train Resolute, you can see this is a cold climate heat pump. Train Resolute looks very similar to that XV19 and that it's just a little side discharge unit. It looks very similar as well to the XR15, which is just a single stage heat pump, but it's a side discharge low profile, which is is something I'm going to talk about in a second when we're talking about physical applications. But basically, the bottom line is there's basically three types of heat pump systems, right? And then there's a fourth category, all, which basically just jumps up from the type of air handler you put in and whether or not you put in a furnace or a traditional air handler. And the first type of heat pump, your most basic heat pump is what's called a single stage heat pump. Now, that's going to be something like this 15, the XR15, this 15 single stage heat pump that says with Weller Guard top. So this is going to be great right in a climate that's really raining or gets a lot of leather from the top because that's going to prevent rain debris from coming inside the unit. This is a basic single stage system, right? And if you look at and jump to some of these other systems, I believe this one, the XLI-15 is a multi-stage, but I could be mistaken. Nope, this is a single stage. But if you look at, here we go, down here, XV-17. No, this one is actually, this is a variable speed system. So I'll get to this in a second. But bottom line is some of these systems, it's missing some stuff on this page, but we'll go through it on another profile. The single stage system is basically it's on or off, right? That's why they call it single stage because it has one stage. A two-stage system or a multi-stage system is what it sounds like. It has 50% capacity and it has 100% capacity. And when you look at a variable speed system, like these systems right here, like the XV17, this has multiple stages beyond that. So this says it's a variable speed system or variable fan stages. And when you go look at the product brochure and you go through the different lineups, you can see these things are all single stage systems, right? The XR14 is a basic 14 SEER system. But then once you 
get to the XR16 and the XL17i, these are actually two stage systems. And then when you get to that XV17, 18, 19, and 20i, those are true variable speed systems. So what do you need and what's most important for you? Let's talk about climate, right? If you're in Southern California and I'll use a uh, like place by the beach that's like comfortable most of the time where the weather is always, you know, maybe between 60 and 80 degrees. So you don't run your AC that often. You don't run your heat that often. You probably don't need the most efficient heat pump on the market. I'm just being straight up because you're not going to use it that much. Now, that doesn't mean you don't want to buy the most efficient heat pump for a couple of reasons. First off is there's some tax credits on there. Still, the tax credits are not and, and rebates are not going to offset the cost or the additional cost for that equipment. It's only going to be more expensive. However, the second and the most important consideration, in my opinion, is comfort. The very Variable speed systems will always be exponentially more comfortable. They're going to be a lot quieter. If you have any neighbors that have like a noisy AC that goes off and it's just super loud, you can see this XR14 single stage runs between 71 and 76 decibels. That means all the time it's going to be call it 75 decibels. It's pretty loud. It just sounds like the air conditioner is on. This is running between 55 and 76 decibels. If you want ultra quiet side discharge systems like that XV19, which a side discharge looks like this guy right here. Those side discharge systems are going to be the absolute quietest always. It's just how they're designed. They're typically just the quieter systems. One thing to note on the XV19 and the Resolute, this was just something, well, it's actually something I read about the Resolute, is that if you do have, see some of the reviews that complain about a system being noisy, it actually has to do with the refrigerant charge being off because these are precisely charged systems that are charged based on line set length. And so when you're charging the system, you want to put in the right amount of refrigerant. If you have too much or too little, the compressor will be noisier than it's supposed to because it's not running the way it's supposed to. And so that's something to consider. But 43 to 57 is the decibel range that that should fall in, which is like whisper quiet. It's very quiet when it first kicks on. 45 decibels is basically like baseline. If you're in an empty room and no one's talking, it's pretty quiet, right? Or just like whispers. It's, it's a very, very quiet rating. So that's something to consider. So if you want the quietest system, right, you're going to be looking at these inverter systems. But if you don't run your system that often, right, maybe you look, like I said, in Southern California and you run it, you're like, dude, I run my system month a year if that or two months a year or two weeks a year right some people when it's only when it's really really hot maybe in the winter a few nights when it's cold it doesn't bother me that much you might just go with a two-stage or even one of these single stage systems unless the comfort is that important to you that which it is for me but i'm the hvac dude so of course i'm going to put in the higher end stuff in which case you would go for one of these systems but in a moderate climate you're going for a single stage system what about if you live in a place like phoenix right arizona or dallas texas or houston texas where it's like the ac capital of the world basically and that's actually where Daikin is headquartered. We're actually a Daikin dealer. You know, what system would you go with in one of those markets? Well, I would go, the short answer is I would go with the, the most expensive system that you can possibly afford if you plan on staying in this. And it's not expensive, but they're typically more expensive, but it's more efficient. And typically efficiency costs money. So I just said expensive because that's normally the trade-off you're looking at. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes you can get a better deal on a, on a more efficient system with rebates, especially where something qualifies for a credit and or a rebate from the utility. And so you're able to save a few bucks. But the reason I would go with that is because if you're going to be in the house for at least five years or more, and you're going to have some time to recoup that savings, then you're going to be better off going with a higher efficiency system because the equipment is under warranty. All these products are under warranty for 10 years on the parts, 12 years on the compressor that's with through train. And so that's going to give you a long enough warranty where if you want to incline, it's where your system runs a lot. You might only have a 10 to 12 year life cycle out of your system. Sometimes systems last 20 years in Colorado, we've pulled out air conditioners that were 30 or 40 years. Some people out here don't really run their air conditioners that often. I think they're crazy because it gets hot here in the summer. So it gets up to 90 to 100. It feels hot here. It does not feel cool. And, and the heat it gets trapped inside your home, even though it's nice out. And so you'll open your windows, but it'll still feel hot inside. And so there is a benefit to having air conditioning here. But if you're in a place like Phoenix or something where you're running your AC six months out of the year, at least getting a variable speed system, you are going to see a cost saving. That's a fact. Now, if you have a, the bigger the home, the bigger bigger the saving in terms of the opposite is true. If you want to save money, get a smaller home. But you know what I mean? When it comes to running your HVAC, you know, a bigger home with more efficient equipment, you're used to having a higher energy bill. Like if you had a 5,000 square foot home and you're used to cooling that and your cooling bill in the summer is $700 a month or $600 a month, and then you switch to an inverter and that's what it was on a single stage system. And I've seen those types of savings numbers where it comes down in half where, you know, you're now spending $300 a month or $350 or $400 but you're getting a significant savings. If you do the math on that and that's two months out, you know, that's six months out of the year that you're saving 200 bucks a month, that's 2,400 bucks a 
year that you're saving. So it's easier to start to recoup that cost and, and just make financial sense. And the comfort factor, again, is just kind of icing on the cake, where if that system, you know, it's going to last you 10, 15 years, maybe even more, depending on the climate. Again, there's going to be a cost savings benefit for your consideration that you want to look at. Now, going back to the topic of stages, I want to point something out here. So as you can see, all these systems in this selection here are all single stage. These two systems in the priority section here are labeled as two stage and then the stages jump up to like 75 750 700 what does this mean right well when i was talking about a single stage system a variable speed system is still technically a stage system it just has so many stages that it doesn't seem like a stage right when you go from in your car and it's idling at a thousand rpms and red line is six thousand rpms it's technically going up by from 1000 rpms to 1001 to 1002 to 1003 that's technically how it's accelerating up so it's still technically like 5,000 stages of power or speed in your motor if you were breaking it up that way the same thing is true for this it's just on how the inverter board communicates with the compressor and gets the system to ramp up and down and ramp those stages up so there's 750 700 stages honestly I don't know if you'll notice a difference between 100 stages or 200 stages it's going to seem like a very smooth operating system is the bottom line this is something to pay attention to and this is your turn down ratio which is basically your operating bandwidth right the system can run between 20 25 and 100% capacity, which means if you had a five ton system, it could run at, you know, one and a quarter ton up to five tons of capacity and anywhere in between. They all, you know, are designed to be quiet systems, SEER ratings up to 20.5, HSPF2 is up to 8.7. I'll link a video at the end of this video that talks about what these efficiency rating means because we explain them in more detail in another video. But essentially, SEER stands for seasonal energy efficiency ratio, and it's how efficient a system is during peak season. There's another rating that's less important, especially in inverters, and that's called EER. And so if you look here and you see this EER rating where it says energy of 10 to 12, that's your energy efficiency ratio. And that's basically an average. And the way it's calculated is basically at max capacity. And so that's why typically inverters have lower EER ratings, the way that they calculate EER, because they actually have other, a lot of times a single stage or not necessarily single stage, but sometimes single stage, two stage systems can be more efficient or from an EER perspective, but in my opinion, EER is not a great way to rate inverters because they're not going to hang out at 100% capacity that often. Even on the hottest day of the year, they might be at 100% capacity for four hours or three hours or two hours during like a peak window. But even then, normally they'll like go up to 100% capacity and ramp down to like 84 and then back down to 72 and back down to 45% capacity. And then they'll just hold set point all day. And so that's where the efficiency with an inverter comes into play. So that's what the energy efficiency ratio means. HSPF2 has to do with heat pumps and, and how they operate and how efficient they are as in heating mode. So again, I'll link that video at the end that explains what all these ratings mean, what they stand for. Again, when you're going through here on this Energy Star site, you can see if something's tax credit eligible, if it's eligible for, you know, in a cold climate, like this Train XV19 is tax credit eligible in the southern regions, but not in those other climates. So basically, if you're looking for a cold climate heat pump, this would probably not be the one for you, unless it's pretty moderate cold climate and in that by cold climate I mean colder states and you would want to consider something else like the one of these other cold climate heat pumps that meets the efficiency requirements in that area and as I mentioned earlier we actually currently are not trained dealer we might offer them future for some you know additional product lines if customers request that but right now we primarily sell Daikin and the reason we sell Daikin is basically the difference between their warranties Daikin has a 12 year warranty and they also have a 12 year unit replacement guarantee and so if you're curious why I mentioned that earlier that we sell Daikin over for crane. That's part of it. We also love the Daikin Fit. It's a very efficient system and it's very popular with our customers, but I have to hats off to train on this XB19 side discharge system, which is this guy right here and their train resolute. It actually looks like a pretty competitive system in terms of how it operates and some of their technology. They also have electronic expansion valves on their air handlers and, and a lot of things that really make it pretty efficient product. So, and pretty competitive product in the marketplace. I hope you enjoyed this content. And if you have a question about a specific product that you're trying to install in your home post in the comment section below like if you're looking at the train xv19 or you're looking at some other product that's how we make videos like this is because people post comments and they let us know what they think or they say hey my name's joe i live in salt lake city my house is 1800 square feet the upstairs bedroom super hot and i'm trying to figure out how to solve this problem do you think i should go with a ductless upstairs or should i do this or i've been contemplating that just give us as much background as you want you know and, and doesn't feel you know absurd and we'll uh <laughs> to you and you know, just 
just like I said, I love when people give us lots of details because it it makes it easy for us to you know post our opinion and uh, as a response. But post your comment in the comment section below. Uh, we do want to provide valuable feedback. We do want to put out content that's relevant for you, and so we do take those comments into consideration when considering you know how to proceed with making content and also how to help you get the best HVAC for your home, which is what this channel is all about. And if you happen to be in one of the areas we service, like Denver, Colorado, or Phoenix, Arizona, you can actually schedule an appointment with us for free. We come out for free for all first-time customers, whether that's for a service call or annual maintenance, or if you're just looking for an estimate for system replacement. And there's actually a link in the description below where you can actually schedule online at your convenience, as well as an up-to-date list of the cities and states that we serve so you can stay up to date when we start servicing your metro. And as mentioned earlier, there's a few videos popping up on the screen right now. One talks about heat pump efficiency ratings as well as a few other videos that YouTube thinks you should watch. So make sure you check those out if you haven't done so already and I will catch you on the next episode.